young girl makes a desperate journey from Earth to Mars in a Regency-era alternate universe where sailing ships ride the currents of air between the worlds in Arabella of Mars. That's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hey everybody, Thomas here. As always, I want to thank you all so much for joining me on this fine Monday morning. Now, once upon a time, long before science piddled on everybody's cornflakes and took away our lush Venusian jungles and our four-armed green Martian warlords, there was a time when the rousing adventure sagas of planetary romance would allow us to break free of the surly bonds of Earth and, and voyage to other worlds limited only by our imaginations. In his debut novel, Hugo Award-winning author David D. Levine recreates that old-fashioned sense of wonder style of science fantasy for a new millennium. Arabella of Mars is the purest escapism, a self-described Regency interplanetary airship adventure that is simply a joy to curl up and read. And don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely delighted by all of the strides that science fiction has taken over the last several decades to boost its literary respectability. But you know, sometimes all you want is a steaming bowl of popcorn and a pitched battle in the skies. And Arabella mashes up the storytelling sensibilities of Jane Austen, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Patrick O'Brien, and even a little bit of Hayao Miyazaki into 350 pages of pure pleasure. So, it's 1812, Napoleon is being a pain in the ass, and Arabella Ashby is a 16-year-old English girl growing up on her beloved father's Martian plantation with her brother Simon. Her mother, who is all about propriety and rigid convention and what young ladies do and young ladies don't do, decides that this life just isn't proper for Arabella, and she takes the girl back to London on Earth to learn how to be miserable in all of the ways that polite society approves of. Now, how do they get from Earth to Mars and back again? Well, simple. You see, in this alternate universe, the solar system is chock full of air, not vacuum, and multiple masted sailing ships ride the interplanetary currents. Now, back on Earth, barely a year has passed before Arabella learns the shocking news of her father's death. And in short order, an even more shocking personal betrayal finds Arabella alone, penniless, and disguised as a boy, desperately seeking passage back to Mars in order to warn her brother, who stayed behind when she and her mother came back to Earth, of impending danger. Everything looks hopeless until Arabella is allowed to join the crew of the merchant vessel the Diana, which is captained by the dashing and worldly Prakash Singh. Now, Captain Singh has taken notice of Arabella's knowledge of the workings of Automata, which was taught to her by her father, and the Diana is a vessel that is navigated in part by the workings of an automaton. But the journey estimated to take at least two months is fraught with unpredictable perils, any one of which could completely derail Arabella's plans to meet up with her brother in time to save him. It isn't just that Arabella has to keep her sex a secret while doing all of the very physically punishing jobs required of a low-level crew member, but there is also the, the threat of sudden attack by French Corsairs. And, deep in the lower decks, Arabella has caught wind of what could be a brewing mutiny. Now, it takes a few chapters for Arabella to sort of warm up to her character, but once we are off the earth and up into the swirling skies, nothing lets up for a minute. Arabella's shipboard adventures are dazzling and exciting, visually breathtaking, as Levine builds his universe and establishes its rules with a confidence born out of years and years in the trenches turning out short fiction. And even all the technical passages detailing how these sailors navigate their ships in three dimensions makes for really gripping reading. Because, in addition to allowing this largely fantastic tale to keep one foot within the realm of science fiction, they help to shore up the world building. There simply isn't a moment in this story where you have a hard time suspending your disbelief. And Arabella grows into a most likable heroine. Now, she was always a girl who wanted anything in life other than just a proper, ordinary existence. And when she gets her wish in doses far bigger than she ever bargained for, she rises to the occasion. But she does so realistically, without ever turning into the sort of hyper-capable superhero that, frankly, a lot of YA protagonists have a habit of turning into. So, if you have been finding yourself among all the stacks of grimdark and dystopia and 
obscure magical realism, just wishing that somebody would write a book for once that was freaking fun, then I think this little tale has your number. Unpretentious and completely confident of its intent, Arabella of Mars flies high. It is just a fantastic yarn. And that is all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. As always, remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You won't always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please slam that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is what helps SFF 180 to grow as a channel. And until I see all of you fine folks next time, happy reading!